Hey folks, this is Kalani. Season 4 only just started up, but we have another patch coming our way next week. Patch 10.2.7 goes live on May 7th and it introduces a bunch of new content for us to sink our teeth into. A huge new PvE event that's focused on super powerful characters, leveling up really quickly and collecting a whole bunch of transmog and mounts. There's brand new story content where we follow Zalatath as she brings forth something horrendous, changes to how certain Dragonflight features and systems are going to work, a whole bunch of user interface options, and some new character customizations. There's a lot of new content coming our way, so let's go through everything coming in patch 10.2.7 Dark Heart. Now before we jump in, be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Perhaps the most exciting thing coming in patch 10.2.7 is the new WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria event. This is a completely different kind of event than what we've seen in the past. We've been given the entire Mists of Pandaria expansion with all of its content, so all of the zones, the leveling, the quests, scenarios, dungeons and raids, all of that will be available right from the get-go with no time gates. We'll also have Dragonflight features enabled like Dragon Riding and Flight from level 10, so you'll be zooming through the skies straight away. But then and they're throwing in new experimental features and systems too. Dungeons and raids are going to unlock as you level, you can play any class currently available in Dragonflight, and will have new ability gems to collect and equip. These gems make your characters crazy overpowered, so you'll be stomping through content at a record pace. And then there's also a special cloak. Throughout your adventures you collect threads that you weave into this event cloak, permanently increasing your stats. There doesn't seem to be any limit to this either, so the more you play, the more threads you collect, the more powerful your character will become. There's also a bonus experience stat that you can increase, so as you power up your cloak you're going to start leveling faster and faster. This cloak also carries over some progress to your alts, so if you get a character to max level and decide you want to level something else later, that alt will be super powerful right from the get-go and should level much faster thanks to that bonus experience. On top of all of that, we'll be able to earn a new currency throughout the entire event called Bronze. You can spend bronze on so many different things like upgrading your gear, buying spell or ability gems, a vast array of consumables to help you on your adventures, or you can spend it on transmog and mounts. Almost every transmog available from Mr. Pandaria can be bought with bronze, and that includes open world transmog from things like quests, dungeon transmog, raid transmog from all difficulties, and even some new stuff. You can straight up buy Mr. Pandaria related mounts as well, including the super rare mounts, so if you've been farming them for years and still haven't gotten your drop, the event will let you work towards any and every mount still available from that expansion. This event is going to be a collector's dream. Between the mountain of rewards, the interesting new mechanics, being able to level quickly and experiencing Mr. Pandaria expansion again or for the first time, this event is going to be a blast. The only bad thing about the event so far is that it doesn't start up until a week after the patch goes live, so the event is a part of 1027, we just have to wait a little bit to dive in and get some crazy leveling adventures underway. Now one of the main complaints about the Mr. Pindaria event is that you need to create a new character to take part in the event, but what if you've already filled up your entire character roster? What if you have 60 max level characters or you just don't want to delete any of your characters to make space? Well we got some good news, 10 to 7 will also increase the maximum character limit from 60 up to 65, so we get 5 new character slots to play around with in the new patch, giving you some extra space to take part in the Mists event without having to delete any of your precious characters. Having to wait an extra week or so for the special new event isn't super ideal, but thankfully that's not the only new thing coming in patch 10.2.7, so we can spend that first week perusing through all of the new patch content. We'll have brand new story quests to work through which set the stage for the war within. Zalatath is up to something, and whatever it is it can't be good. We're calling her the Harbinger now, so you know some crazy stuff is about to go down. There seems to be quite a few quests in this new storyline, but we haven't been able to preview any of it on the PTR, so it's all new to everyone. We'll just have to wait and see where this all leads when the patch goes live. The very beginning of the War Within does seem to be kind of crazy, no spoilers here, but if you go into the start of the expansion without any prior knowledge of the story, you're probably going to be blown away by some of the big decisions that have been made. I am very curious how 1027 will bridge the gap between now and those large story events, so following the Harbinger, figuring out what she's after and how everything ties together is going to be very fun. I love that the dev team have decided to fully set the stage for the next expansion in the last patches of the 
previous expansion instead of just relying on pre-patch and then jumping into a new story on launch day. It flows better, gives us more to do while we wait for the next expansion, and helps build excitement. Speaking of story content, quite a few storylines throughout Dragonflight were locked behind Renown levels, in some cases quite high Renown levels. If you weren't interested in the Renown or Reputation grind, you may have missed out on these entirely. Well, in 1027, the Renown requirements for the story quests have been removed. You'll find a little gathering of quest NPCs in Valdraken, and they offer all of the various Renown storyline quests for you to pick up and work through, so you no longer need any Renown to work through any story content in the expansion. We're also going to see two new heritage armors in 1027, starting with the Trolls. This heritage armor feels very Dark Sphere Troll from the Warcraft 3 era, and has the iconography and elements you would expect, like the shield, the shoulders, and the tusks. The face mask is an interesting choice. I think it's a neat idea. Some prominent trolls have had masks like this, but I don't know if it translated too well in-game. It kind of looks like an elephant's trunk from the front, but it's a cool troll set nonetheless. The other race getting their heritage armor are the Draenei. I was a little surprised when these were first previewed. When you think of Draenei, a lot of folks probably jump to the ornate crystal armors that we saw quite a bit in the Burning Crusade, but this set works more with their outcast and hermit heritage, which is also really cool. There are also some color variations here with different colored crystals and sashes, so hopefully we'll have access to those as well. Each new race will have new story quests to work through to unlock these appearances, so even more new story content to look forward to. Now a curious update in 1027 is the addition of a personal tabard. You'll be able to customize this tabard in much the same way the guild tabards work, but it is personal, so you can design exactly what you want to run around with without it being tied to a guild or an existing tabard in the game. There'll be a new story quest relating to Emberthal and Drakthia visage forms. You can start the quest by talking to Chromie, who is next to the fountain in Valdraken. The quest continues in the Valdraken barbershop, where you can find the Drakthia leaders talking about their visage forms. The quest line itself isn't too long, but it does also lead you out into various other side quests across the Dragon Isles, which you will need to complete to progress through to the end and acquire your personal tabard. So this will take quite a bit longer if you've not done any side content in Dragonflight, but it's a nice way to show you what you may have missed. We're also going to see quite a few updates to the user interface, starting with an upgraded group finder. We're going to be able to filter through specific dungeons whether your role fits into the group composition, so whether the group actually has space for you, class specific choices, whether or not there's a tank or healer in the group, minimum ratings, and difficulty of the dungeon. You can also see the class of each group member of any listing by looking at the color of the class icon, and the leader's information is better laid out. Overall, it's much better than the old default group finder, with a lot more options to filter the groups for exactly what you might be looking for when you're trying to find a group to join. It's kind of like having the pre-made groups filter add-on enabled baseline, although the add-on will still give you more extra functionality. It's nice that the base UI is being upgraded to include this kind of search and filter function though. Another big update for the UI will be coming for the Hunter Stables. The window is now much larger, more information is displayed for each pet, including their abilities. You can favorite pets, search, filter, and sort by name, specialization, or abilities, and you can rename and release pets directly from the stable. For Beast Mastery, there's also a slot next to the active pet list for you to choose which pet is used for the animal companion talent, so that is much easier to set up and change. All in all, a pretty big overhaul for the pet management window for Hunters. There's also going to be a new option in the auction house that I am very excited for. Under the filter options, you can now select current expansion only. Selecting this will cut out all of the noise from older expansions materials, so when we go into the War Within, you won't see Dragonflight materials anymore, which is great if you're just looking for the new War Within stuff for crafting. Obviously, if you want to look for something from a previous expansion, maybe some old materials you want to get your hands on, you can just toggle it back off. Sifting through older expansion materials and names can get quite tedious if you aren't sure exactly what you're looking for, so being able to toggle on expansion only mats and look at every ore or herb for that expansion lets you look for less specific search results but you still only get relevant materials. That is a great change in my opinion. And then the last little UI update we have for this patch is for dragon riding races. There's a new icon on your world map that shows you where dragon riding races are, so no more guessing or looking things up or relying on a quest or world quest to show you the way. You can see every race for every map that has them. This will continue to be important in the next expansion as well, as dragon riding races will be present throughout the War Within zones. So now we'll have a much easier time finding them and completing them for all those sweet, sweet achievement points. 
You can also toggle this new icon on or off as well, so if you need to find a race you can toggle it on, and then if you maybe finish them all later and don't need to see them you can just toggle it off to reduce your map clutter, so that's a nice touch. And then there are some fun new customization options coming for the Kulturan race in the patch as well. They're going to have six new hair colors to pick and choose from, so if you're playing a Kulturan be sure to check those out when the patch goes live. But that's everything coming in patch 10.2.7. Lots of user interface changes which are always nice to see, buffing up the base UI to make some add-ons less of a requirement will always be a good thing in my opinion, and then between the new story content and the Mr. Pandaria event, we're actually going to see a good chunk of content to keep us busy until the War Within pre-patch a couple months down the line, so that's all very exciting. Which feature are you most excited about in 10.2.7? The Mr. Pandaria remix event, the new story content setting the stage for the war within, or having five new character slots to fill up. Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members who are on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.